Pokemon Infinite Fusion is a fan-made game where you can fuse any two Pokemon together to create extremely awesome and sometimes kind of cursed Pokemon fusions. With the game having 170,000 possible combinations, as well as over 80,000 custom sprites made by the community, there is so many cool fusions to explore. But I wanted to do something just a little bit cooler. We all know that shiny Pokemon are some of the coolest things in the Pokemon games and company in general. So in today's run, I'm going to be attempting a Nuzlocke of Pokemon Infinite Fusion using only shiny Pokemon fusions. Buckle up, because this is gonna be fun. So for our rival's name, I'm going with Tomato because when I think about shiny Pokemon, I keep thinking about the song from Moana about being shiny, and I'm pretty sure the crab's name from that was like Tama Tomoa or something. So Tomato it is. We grab this starter Marie, but since we're only using shiny Pokemon fusions, we won't be using this, which means after finally getting our Pokedex and Pokeballs, it's time to shiny hunt. Typically shiny odds for Pokemon Fire Red are 1 in 8 1192 which is absolutely insane so i did a little bit behind the scenes changed some settings in the game and made the odds about one in 200 it makes it a little bit easier for me to get these shinies for the video and for this nuzlocke but it doesn't make them too abundant so i still have to shiny hunt and i shiny hunted for hours Let's go, yeah! Dude, that is the coolest, that is so cool. So shinies in this game are not the normal shinies. They're hue changes just because of the game engine, but they are amazing, they're so cool. This thing's amazing, and our first shiny if we can catch it, so let's try. For instance, this is shiny Charizard, and this is shiny Charizard in Pokemon Infinite Fusion. Super different, but I like them both. So after finding our first shiny, we name him Jim, because he's an earth snake and I'll leave it at that comment if you know what the name references to another Torterra fusion what are the odds what are the odds that we get another Torterra fusion as our shiny I haven't even seen this one. Oh, what do we do to not knock it out I'm just gonna start throwing pokeballs at it I guess we caught our second shiny Pokemon and named it blimp adding it to our now Torterra themed party we caught a Persian Snorlax fusion in the next route which looked so cute and sleepy that I just had to name him EP if you're a cat owner you know we then then pressed on to Viridian Forest, where we found one of the cutest fusions of all time. Um, Banks is so cute. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. It just looks like someone painted a Shinx for like Halloween. Unfortunately, we didn't get the Um Binks, and instead added yet another grass type to our team and named it Veggie. And of course, the shiny we get is in the web. Ah, I would have loved an Umbinx. That would have been so cool. But we got a Chico sect. Probably bug grass. Is Chikorita a vegetable? What kind of vegetable would it be? Man, this is making me hungry, but I have no time to make anything. Good thing I have Factor, who's today's video sponsor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen meals right to your door every single week, which makes it super convenient to eat healthy even when you're crazy busy. Factor's fresh never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes so all you have to do is plop it in the microwave or the oven heat it up and enjoy then i can get back to crushing my goals factor also offers a ton of different types of meal plans like calorie conscious options and even keto friendly choices which makes it super easy for me to stick to my diet i'm already seven pounds down try delicious dietitian approved meals like their calorie smart options with around or less than 550 calories per serving factor has helped me save a ton of time by removing the shopping, the cooking, the planning, and even the calorie counting stress by having it all laid out perfectly for me. Go to factor75.com or use the link down in the description and use the code COSMIC50 to get 50% off your first box. Factor meals taste delicious. I know you're gonna love them, so go and check them out and thank you again, Factor, for sponsoring this video. I should mention that while the encounters in Pokemon are randomized, the gym types are not, which means our grass team is actually pretty good for the first couple gyms. And I was correct. Brock's Bond's Life Fusion stood no chance against Blim's Water Gun, and his second Pokemon, a Rock Ground Fusion, was quickly obliterated, which meant more shiny fusions. Porians, that Porygon and Ekans? Very interesting. Ah! What is that thing? Ew! Kill it! Ew! 
Yeah, there's one of those cursed fusions I was talking about. You better subscribe or else I'm sending an army of those weed growths after you. And also because we're almost to 100,000 and we get to evolve Gallopup, our channel's mascot, when we reach it. All that aside, we managed to catch ourselves one of my favorite shinies from the run, Silvuckle. And we named it Dapper because it looks mighty fancy. Veggie also evolved and unfortunately was not custom, but maybe it will be when it evolves again. Hey, this... Swaichu's little face. He's like, mm -hmm. yep, that's in the world now. Anyways, we managed to get to Mount Moon, find a bunch of cool fusions, and after some time encountering, ran into this. Yes, we got a war turtle with a wig. And I named him Toupee, which on hindsight, I don't think this is how it's spelled, but oh well. At the end of the cave, we found Team Rocket doing something, but that's not why we're here. We want more shinies. So I chased him off and we left the cave towards Cerulean City. While hunting for our next shiny, we ran into Ursano, which I still can't think of what this fusion is so if you know comment it below because this dude looks fierce and extremely goofy all at once but eventually we found our shiny Honchkor, let's go. I love Honchkor, super cool Pokemon. Gliscor, amazing Pokemon. And I think we've used Honchkor in a past playthrough. These colors, mwah, let's go. After adding Big Boss to the team, we headed north for more shinies, then completely forgot that a rival would want to battle. Luckily, EP was able to do some serious damage with Bite, knocking out a Chandelure fusion, and then barely survived a burn pursuit on one HP. As as we switched into Dapper, which easily took out the Ratmer and Pukenub. Finally, Jim came in to finish off his starter and we'd survive the battle, but just barely. After the battle, Toupee evolved and he wasn't looking so good. Out of all these awesome potential fusions, I ended up catching a Mud Junior. Unfortunately, his evolutions were also terrible and not custom, so we're gonna move on without him. Misty was an absolute breeze as Jim and Blimp did what they do best, being grass types, I guess? I don't know where I was going with that. Next, we found another amazing Shinx fusion, and of course, got this hot garbage instead. We also got this pink mustache clock on the next route. I'm gonna name it Darkiplier just cause it's got a pink mustache. And if you know, you know. It was then that we headed straight for the SSN, destroyed some creepy fusions and faced off against Tomato once again. Luckily, Dapper and Big Boss easily destroyed him. Man, I love these fusions on this run, not you. Before taking on Surge, I decided to look in Diglett's cave for a potentially good fusion against the electric type gym. And that is where we found Jolly. Well, eventually. Getting this one took a lot of running in circles. Without Jolly, this gym would have been an extreme issue, but with mud bombs and the occasional body slam from EP, we wiped the floor with this Poke War veteran. In the next route, we managed to find another Mamoswine fusion, Squidward, and then in the cave ahead, we found an enlightened Alakazam. I named him Shrooms. At the Pokemon Tower, Tomato's team stood no chance, but what can you expect when one of your Pokemon is just a blurry Z? Zekrom head pasted on an electrode's body? Dude, some of these fusions need help. Oh, jeez, that's like something out of The Last of Us right there. Ugh, like I said, kill it! Before getting to the next town, we snagged ourselves this little skeleton man that I should have named Sans on hindsight, but decided to name Grim instead. With our now polished up team, we went in with Erica to fight some bad guys, but once again, we're not here for you, Giovanni. We're here for shinies. Big Boss and Jolly handled his team easily Easily, meaning it was finally time to face Erica for our fourth gym badge. Toupee managed to take out Brajask with Flame Burst, and Big Boss then annihilated Gen Flora. Sun Scott stood no chance against Acrobatics, and we had finally won our fourth gym badge easily. After the battle, Toupee finally evolved into its custom sprite once again, still just as neon bright as ever. And Grim finally evolved, looking a little less cool and more like the toilet paper man off of Codename K hit next door. I think it's the hands. Our mime fusion finally reached its final evolution after training it up, and it was horrifying. This reminds me of the toys that that kid messed up from Toy Story. Absolutely terrifying. Meganium and Parasect also evolved and became some SCP kind of monster, and we just can't look away. With all of our Pokemon leveled up, we grabbed the flute from the old man in the tower and then searched for a shiny among all of these awesome fusions. And of course, we got Bob Ross. Luckily, 
some better fusions do come shortly after, though none as cute as this Hansura and his little wooden sword. Aw, oh, Hansura is so cute. The wooden sword. I want to see what his evolution looks like. Let's go, Magpert. Ooh, okay. So we got another Swampert and Machamp. Knuckles was going to be an awesome addition to the team. We could have had a Korok from Legend of Zelda or even one of the coolest magic art fusions I've ever seen. But we instead got this pink superhero bird, then accidentally knocked it out. Anyways, time for Koga's fighting type gym. And yes, I know, it's Bruh. not a fighting type gym. Ooh, double Nido King. Hold up, Nido King's not fighting type? No, Nido King's poison ground. Oh, because I always. Oh, Dang it. Let me know in the comments if you guys do this. I don't know why, but I always think that Koga is the fighting type gym leader and he's a freaking poison type gym leader. We did not come prepared. Unfortunately, this mistake as well as a Spinarak fusion living on two HP cost me one of the best fusions that we had. Big boss, he will be missed. Afterwards, Jim evolved and it looked okay, but I wanted to see what it looked like reversed and I loved this fusion. The Mega Steelix vibes it gave were so cool, so we kept this form instead. Darkiplier also evolved, and I love the purple galaxy design. With our rebuilt team, I charged into Saffron City for our sixth gym badge, but I was stopped by Team Rocket, so I decided it was time to take him out. Silphco can be scary, but after beating up some goofy <laughs> fusions and rescuing everyone, we made our way to the top dog, Giovanni. If my big boss fell, so will yours. After, of course, I make some tomato soup because the rival's name's Tomato. Everything was going well as one Pokemon fell after another, and I had to do a lot of switching due to their starter Dusclops Talonflame, but then suddenly, Jim was faced with the fiercest opponent imaginable. So Quill. I'm telling you guys, it's never the biggest, scariest, legendary fusions that are always the ones that do the most damage in these playthroughs. It's always the little tiny ones you never suspect. Sadly, Zoquil had Lava Plume and our newly evolved Jim fainted. Knuckles took his revenge and finished off the rest of Tomato's Pokemon, but the damage was done. We grabbed Darkiplier and went back in to fight Giovanni. Now it's common knowledge that double battles are the bane of Nuzlocke's existences, especially when you're forced to battle with your rival. The odds of them helping you instead of hurting you are extremely slim because they're not caring about whether or not your Pokemon survives, they're just trying to win the battle. Anyways, after taking out Giovanni, Bonnie's Empoleon fusion, EP was hit hard by a drill peck, and then it was followed by a wood hammer. Luckily, Toupee came in to take out the Magneton fusion before getting hydro pumped by Giovanni. Then our wonderful rival and teammate used Discharge, effectively knocking out both our opponent's Pokemon as well as our own. Luckily, that was the end of the losses for this battle, and we managed to finish it sending Giovanni running. Three losses in Silphco, time to take it out on Sabrina. Sabrina Shandiking was difficult to take down with her healing every freaking turn, but eventually Darkiplier managed to take it out with Earth Power. Mr. Trio, which kind of looked like a barbershot triplet, also fell. Jolly had to come in to take out the Nido Tang, but then her double Sloking fusion managed to bring every single one of my Pokemon into the red. Luckily, Grim managed to land a burn with Will-O-Wisp, so Darkiplier just had to stall it out with Recover, winning the battle and our sixth gym badge. On our way to see Blaine to get our seventh badge, we caught a little Starlet, which was a Diglett Starmie fusion, as well as after an insanely long time surfing, managed to find and catch our first legendary fusion, Kyocell, a Sneasel Kyogre fusion. We named it Flipper and then hunted for another really long time until we finally were able to catch this elegant Volcarona Gardevoir fusion. I named it Milady. While training up our new Pokemon, Grim evolved as did Flipper, and I have to say, this is definitely one of my favorite fusions from the run. Let me know what some of your guys' favorite fusions have been. In the Pokemon Mansion, I managed to eventually find this Aegislash Infernape fusion and named it Sparta, which just seemed fitting. And I finally caught this Trap Tick before taking on Blaine. I don't have much hope for this one. Blaine ended up being one of the easiest gyms yet with our crazy powerful water and ground types. 
Bunch of ground types and a water type. Flay on this one, Mwah. one of my favorite thumbnails that is on. If you haven't checked out the evolution video, oh, you definitely should. After taking it down with Origin Pulse, his next two Gengar fusions fell just as quickly. And not wanting to risk Flipper against his final Pokemon, I switched into Star Trio, who I forgot to name, but we finished Blaine off. So for those of you who don't know or haven't seen any of the prior videos or played Infinite Fusion, the next battle is against an insane monster. It's called Zap Mulkuno. It is a triple fusion between all three legendary birds. So it has three health bars and gets to attack three times per turn. We don't have anything really good against this. We don't have a discharge user. We don't have many rock slide users. Dapper does have rock slide and really high defenses. So they're kind of our last ditch effort. Flipper, crazy fast. Ice beam, origin pulse in the rain. Ice shard. We should be able to do some really good good damage. So with this sturdy plan held together by glue and duct tape, I charged forward to what could possibly be the end of the run and the loss of the Nuzlocke. And there it is, the fusion of all three being created. Giovanni, hit me with your worst, or preferably just uh, be super easy to beat. I don't think we're gonna outspeed with Jolly, and I think this is sending a lamb to a slaughter. Powder Snow hits them all and slows them down. That's actually, oh, it doesn't slow him down. Jolly, Godspeed. The most problematic is probably, I'm gonna say Moltres. Okay, Darkiplier takes that super well. Let's do another Psychic and we knock out Moltres. Okay, so they actually probably outspeed now. So we need to send in Spartan. I think we have to risk not living. We do outspeed. Low roll, low roll, low roll. Spartan's gone. That's bad. I think we switched Dark Plier back in and let's recover. I'm actually just gonna full heal. Now I should survive just fine. I'm gonna use Psychic on the Zapdos because that's what's holding us back right now. Oh, a high roll. Dang it. Flippers are last hope. I have to Ice Beam Zapdos and we knock it out. Origin Pulse would have hit them all. Uh, I'm gonna just do another Origin Pulse and we win, okay. And so we managed to get through this battle. Sadly, losing three amazing fusions, but with the hardest battle behind us, it was time to finish what we had started and get our final badge. Giovanni, the final gym leader, didn't seem like much of a problem. And with a Drizzle Kyogre fusion using Origin Pulse, it should have been an easy win. Unfortunately, due to missing an Origin Pulse and having to switch switch out, as well as a massive giga impact. Milady fell just as fast as she had joined the team. Luckily, Flipper came back in and managed to destroy the rest of his team, meaning there was only two things left to do. Find a few more shinies and defeat the Elite Four. On our way to the Elite Four, we caught this goofy dude who didn't end up having a custom fusion, sadly, so we boxed him. Then after searching a while, we found a double starter fusion, Treesaur. We named him Flora as a mono grass type, and then our final fusion of the run was another double starter fusion Swampakin, which with speed boost would be super useful. Finally, we had arrived at the Elite Four and it was time to make our final team. Flora's final evolution was not bad. And then there was Bob Ross, which was still bad even with huge power. Surprisingly, our little Joltik Flygon fusion ended up being a decent looking bug dragon. Here's the final team. I decided to go with Bugsy, Torrent, Flipper, Flora, Dapper and Knuckles. This would be the team that takes me to the top or falls with me to the bottom. Lorelei was kind of a joke since we led with Torrent and after getting some speed boosts off, there was nothing she could do to stop us from fire punching our way through every single ice fusion on her team. Even this amazing Minda fusion from Twilight Princess. One down, three to go. Bruno was up next and his first two Pokemon fell to Knuckles Earthquakes easily. We then switched into Bugsy, set up a sticky webs and not knocked out his own Gavantula fusion with Earthquake as well. Dapper then almost got knocked out by a Luxio fusion, but luckily a super effective Draining Kiss healed it right back up, leaving Mistop, his final Pokemon, standing no chance against this tank of a fusion. Don't f 
with Shuckle. So far, so good. Agatha's ghost types didn't know what hit him. As I led Flora, we night slashed her ghostly Empoleon. Flipper then took out her next Pokemon and was faced with the first actually intimidating Pokemon of the Elite Four, Gaskia. Luckily, it was a Ghastly and not a Gengar, so we outsped and an Ice Beam took it out. Origin Pulse then finished off her last two Pokemon, including this funny Raticate stuck to a trap with a wheel of cheese on its head? Super creative. Blaine's dragon types were the final barrier. And I have a Kyogre fusion. Ice Beam almost took out his Latios fusion, and after burning all of his full restores, he switched, and Ice Shard quickly took out his Pupitar. Akiram Torterra fusion then came out and dealt massive damage with Leaf Storm, so I had to switch to keep Flipper safe. Dapper then was able to defeat the monster and the Latios fusion, and I'm suddenly faced with a Haxorus fusion that looks kind of like it ate too much. Regardless, it takes massive damage from Moonblast and a Pixelite quick attack finishes him off, leaving Pukumuku as his final fusion. We whittled it down slowly just in case it had enters out, which it did. Now it was the time, the final battle. Tomato's first Pokemon was spectacular. And after setting up sticky webs and missing a Dragon Claw, I decided to let Bugsy go down. Torrent then snagged Burn and built up its speed boost, allowing us to take out his Scizor with Fire Punch. Tomato's starter fell quickly to Ice Beam, and then we switched into Knuckles to face against his Weagross. Unfortunately, Knuckles just couldn't do enough damage, and they fell. But this brought it just within range for Torrent to come in and finish it off. Tomato then sent out Clefras, which was bulk city. It just wasn't worth switching into something else to take some damage, so I let Torrent go down, and we were now 3v3. Flora managed to finish off the Clefras with Leap Blade, and then destroyed Stargar with Night Slash, meaning our rival's final Pokemon, Blissfree, was an easy final foe for our longest surviving team member, Dapper. And that's how you beat Pokemon Infinite Fusion with shiny Pokemon fusions only. Crazy fun, super cool. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Peace.